Oh yes, guys. What that's a shit intro. Start again. Starting in three, two, one. What is up, YouTube? How you doing? I'm back, and it's not a video today. It's a longer format, you know, podcast. We back. It's been so long. I don't know why I haven't done a podcast in ages. Probably because half my fans don't really care for them. Um, because some of you are too young to have any short sort of attention span. I can't speak to that. Get all the mistakes out now. That's what I'm trying to do. Like, ah. Oh. Right, I'm starting again. And this time I'm going to do it. It's alright. I will give you time. Hey yo guys, what is up? It's your boy, Louisey21, back with another podcast. Yes, I know. It's been way too long, guys. And yeah, I need to talk about everything that's been going on. From the Euros to Matt Hancock to... Well, who cares about that guy, really? Uh, I rate him, actually. Yes. No. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, and there's a lot going on. You know, COVID, not COVID wave three or four or floods or whatever else there is going on in the world. The Olympics, G Team GB doing amazing. Uh, you know, so many medals flying around. Um, great time to be a sports fan. After, well, I mean, after what Italy did as well. Nobody gave us a chance. Um, yeah, long story. I know there's a lot of negativity around that whole game. What came after between certain fans. Or whatever, but we enjoyed the football, guys. Like, if you're an England fan as well, you enjoyed every game up until that final. Well, not enjoyed, but... But, yeah. There's a lot to talk about, guys. I'm back with a podcast. Just me talking, literally. Not reacting, well, reacting to life. And my life. Um, and what's going on around it. And planning a summer holiday. Or trying to. Uh, we're hoping to go away. Oh, I hope I'm not shouting. Because that's the thing, like, a podcast, you don't want to be shouting the whole time and trying to entertain too much. You just want to, like, speak. So, yeah, I'm not going to speak at that level the whole time. I'm excited, though, guys. I'm excited. Um, things are looking up. I don't know why I did that with my lip. But, yeah. I hope the lighting's okay. I always fiddle around with the lighting. Do I want the main light on or off? Do I want a dark background? Um, I'm trying to balance the the blue light with uh, enough warmer light so I don't look pale. I'm not this pale in real life. I'm just looking at the screen. I look pale. I look pale right now. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the Euros. So before this tournament, um, you know, there's a lot of talk around different teams. Um, I mean, the confidence in England grew as the tournament went on for England. Italy, like, we've been, well, the whole world has been through so much turmoil and stress with this COVID and Italy, you know. Just think of it, like, two months, not two months, two years almost, without fans at stadiums. You know, it was time to dry the tears, you know, forget about the sounds of sirens and all the the lockdowns and just enjoy football. Because football brought the world together and sadly what we saw after the final showed the bad side of football too. You know, it goes full circle. Um, but when someone like Rio Ferdinand goes, oh, I don't care who we play in the final, Italy or Spain, we're going to wipe the floor with them or beat them. Um, you jinx the whole thing. And three players missed their penalties for England and nobody seemed to... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that just couldn't forgive them. Like, a lot of stupid idiots that took it away from football and made it about conversation about something that's not even to do with football. 
so, um, a small minority of idiots decided to twist the whole story and put blame on these kids and whether people did it from a nasty way or just a football way, like too much on, on these players, too much pressure on England players. Um, I'm not saying that's why Italy won it, because credit to Italy, we, we came to London and took England again, basically, like the Romans did many years ago in some ways. And, we, and the Romans almost practically contribute to the building of London. Or, you know, if not for the Romans, London wouldn't be here. So to come to London, come to Wembley and take the trophy, you know. I mean, Chiellini said it for Italy, like, England were bound to get to the final if almost every game they played was a home game. Like, you've got to think of it that way. I mean, we were in the lion's den and we came and we just killed the lions, basically. We tamed those lions. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just upsetting England fans now. But credit to both teams, it was brilliant. But Southgate, good manager, yeah. But this whole, oh, we can't concede. Oh, be careful. Uh, get the job done, get the job done. Isn't how you win trophies. You win trophies by taking a risk, putting your neck on the line, risking it all, blood, sweat and tears, trying to literally dying on that pitch to win. And this is what the Italy players do. When you see them singing the anthem, they're literally saying they'll die for Italy. Would the England players die for the for, for England after the way that the, the the public abused those players? Or certain people did? I wouldn't want to wear an England shirt again after that. As a player. With disrespect. But then there's been a lot of love too. Credit to the people that have stood by their players, said well done and been proud. I'm very proud of my ATP team too. Um, obviously, I'm born in England, so people are like, why are you supporting Italy? But it's the blood. It's in my blood. And sorry if that offends you. Um, well, if that offends you, you're not watching this. Um, but with that style, tentative style, England, yeah, it's brilliant the way they play, but like, it's not fun to watch. It gets the job done, but that's not enough in football. Southgate's good, but we need to, they need to go another level now. And Southgate did steady the ship, you know. Um, but yeah, people are, were in love with football again. And it, well, it brought out some haters, but who cares what people like say about you? But when it's on social media and that level of abuse those players were getting. See, I'm, I'm so happy Italy won, but like living in England, I couldn't walk around the street wearing my Italy shirt, not fearing that I was going to get stabbed or something in that moment because of some stupid fans small group um, but yeah a few weeks have passed people have calmed down um, and the other week I went to the Isle of Wight and there wasn't any talk of that and it was just banter friendly banter about football but um, I'm just basking in the glory of winning that like Italy it like for those of you who remember 06 um, yeah you know you know what Italy's about for those of you older, or at, well, at least around my age, or older, will know what Italy means to football. And, like, anyone, people younger than me were like, oh, nah, we're going to beat you, you're rubbish, all this, you know. All the abuse I was getting from younger people, who probably weren't even alive in 06, and so don't even know the history. So they didn't fear Italy, like, maybe someone that knows about the history would and our, our success rate in finals. Like we've been in like 12 and won six of them or something, I think. And yeah, so some people would have been nervous. Younger fans would have been like, yeah, it's coming home. It's coming home. We keep saying that, but they didn't say when. Whether it's coming home, I don't know. Um, but yeah, they're talking about all the next tournament. They said that last time. One step further is to win it, but I mean, if they meet us, they're going to lose again. I'm sorry. And yeah, you can say, oh, they were cheaters. Oh, uh, Kellini almost killed Saka putting in his shirt, all this. But you've got to be mean to win. You can't just go, oh, sorry. You know? Yes, Kellini made the mistake of letting Saka pass. But once there, he's like, nope, you're staying with me. You ain't going anywhere, son. 
saying, eh, nah, yes, you're a brilliant player, credit to you, but, and then people like, you know, moaning at Kiamini's violence. You smashed up Wembley, guys. I'm sorry. It's football at the end of the day. Was it a sending off? Was it this? Was it that? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it was violent. And, but football isn't like, well, it is for fairies, I guess, but I don't mean that in, in a way to say football players are soft. They are soft. Because in rugby, that's nothing. But um, Yeah, it's not like a non-contact sport. It's got to be contact. But yeah, I'm still talking about it. I know. And, I, and you probably turned it off by now. If you're an England fan or if you hate football. But I'm still here. Yeah, I got a bit um, emotional that day with the final. Especially for the people that have given it all that before. Saying England were going to win. Well, a lot of people. You've got to believe if you don't believe. We, and and I, I, you know, I was talking about this in the vlog back then in 2018, after that World Cup when Italy weren't in it. Everyone kept reminding me of that. And I was talking about England there, about their hopes. And, yeah, but when it comes to Italy, England, I'm supporting Italy. Yeah, I respect England. And I'm born here, I'm grateful. My second team, but my first team is Italy, so... Don't even ask me who I support in the future. You know the answer. But yeah, so after that, I went to the Isle of Wight, an island off the coast of Portsmouth or Southampton. Um, whatever, you, whatever. It's down that way anyway. It's down south. And it was really warm that weekend. Had a good three days in the Isle of Wight. Sadly, I had to come back early for a funeral. Um, never nice. Um, not, you know, a downer after a holiday, obviously. But, like, it had to be done. Um, but, yeah, it's been a tough time. Um, lost a few people close, like, friends that are like family um, from the football world, Percher football community. Um, yeah, so it's been, like, that's been difficult to take. It's been an ongoing, like, negative, like, been negative things happening, like, the last two or three years for the sport in terms of people that we've lost, like, um, friends that are like family, like I said. Um, but it's been also a great time for the sport because um, a, a Persia football game the WFA Cup final was on BT Sport, part of the Disability Cup um, weekend of finals for different disability sports at St George's Park. Um, there was a pageant football game between Aspire from my club that I'm part of um, and West Brom. Um, sadly, Aspire didn't win. They normally win these kind of finals. West Brom won it in the end on penalties. It was a bit like the Italy England, the Italy England game, but obviously West Brom were the Italy in this situation. Um, so that's great for the sport to be on BT, and long live Padre football. And I hope it's on TV more often because we deserve to be. And of course, Aspire is my former actual team I used to play for. I play within the same club. Um, but for another team within our club. Um, so that was historical. See some of your ex-teammates um, play and be live on TV. Uh, friends, you know. It's a family. Yeah, on the pitch, there's beef between every team. And there's always that competition, that rivalry between teams, even within the same club. But I was just emotional day for the sport to be on TV. Um and yeah it's just it's it's great to finally see and hopefully we'll be in the paralympics one day um we we deserve that space we deserve that opportunity um people work tirelessly for free in the sport some people voluntarily 
uh, at the beginning were parents, coaches, referees. They're all parents or carers that became coaches and referees and officials within the sport, which is amazing. And people who weren't even, didn't even have sons or daughters in the sport, committing a lot of time and effort to the sport. Um, and if it is on BT, do give it a watch. I think there was a replay on Channel 4 at some point. But the Disability Cup, keep a look out for it next year as well. Um, you never know, you might see me there. Uh, my team, we've got Chance Muscle Warriors. Don't forget the name. Um, and, yeah, history was made. And credit to everyone involved. Both teams, because it's got to be nerve-wracking being on TV. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's what we've been waiting for for years. And some players have been playing almost 20 years. I've been playing, what, 14, 15 years. A long time as well. It's come a long way. And it, it's so professional these days. It's brilliant. Um, and credit where it's due, you know. And the younger players coming through, amazing talents we've got. That the future of the sport getting younger and younger. I mean, I was like, what, 13, 14 when I started? There's players like like eight or nine that are playing. Um, you know, the younger they, they get, the better, the better they will be um, by the time they're like my age. You know, or certainly they'll be ready for a higher level of sport from a younger age and the high pressure situations that players need to learn from, even if you don't always succeed. Like the England players, they, those players are going to come back stronger. They're going to fight back hard and do everything to prove how good they are, even though they don't need to prove to anyone, but they want to prove to themselves to kill kill the haters' spirit in that sense. Stop the haters being hated. Well, you can't stop them, but to shut them up or show people that you, the talent you have because they will look at the negative only. Like, if you're a movie director, you could make a hundred movies. I mean, you could make one movie, read a hundred reviews. They could all be good, but one could be negative. And that one will stick in your mind. So for all the praise these players get, one negative thing might stick in their mind, but then it might motivate them from that pain to learn and develop their game in that way. You can use the pain. They say no pain, no gain. And I'm not speaking as like a masochist, but pain is what motivates people to do better in certain situations. From failure, you can learn. I mean, Michael Jordan in basketball, uh, take that for example. He did say in his documentary that he wasn't the fastest, he wasn't the most skillful, wasn't the biggest, the, the strongest, but he was the hardest working. And he had the will to prove to people how good he could be by hard work and to make himself the world's best. The will to believe, you know, you've got to believe it. You know, and for all the other attributes, hard work beats talent every time. And yeah, maybe some of those, it's, I mean, those English players on paper are far more skillful and Maybe some of them even got more trophies than the Italian players, but have they got that grit? That something extra? You know? The extra thing you need. Taking pain and turning it into power, I guess. Because Italy, like, I mean, England made the biggest mistake by scoring first because they pissed us off. And you give us a reason to fight back, to want to improve our game, to actually take the result or try to and then go to penalties but yeah in life like no pain no gain boys crack there no pain no gain like I've learned that the well everyone's learned it the hard way no one's perfect no one's got it easy you know there's always things you can improve but we are human at the end of the day, to err is human. 
I've got a top that says that. It's got that pirate logo on it and it says, to R is human. Because we're all pirates. No. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Why am I saying that? But, yeah, literally every time you fail at something, you get better. Like, take my my time playing in Aspire, the team I mentioned earlier. They were in the cup final. We won a lot of trophies. You know? But, I realise that the trophies aren't what matter. It's the journey. It's the experiences. The laughs, the banter on the way. And, yeah, I, I'd moved from the team I'm at now, basically, to Aspire. And then after, I moved back. Um, and there were times where I'd be on the bench for Aspire and I'd think, OK, maybe I'm on the bench because I'm not good enough. And to think that is completely wrong. To put yourself in that boat and blame yourself is completely wrong. Um, and to have that mindset. You've got to believe, even if you're not the best, you've got to believe you are. Because that belief will make you do things to prove that you are the best. And it's not about who's good and who's not. Um, it's not about me being the top player, you know. It's not about my ego. Because at that time I was too, I was very humble and too like, like I wouldn't dig myself up. And yet, there's an air of cockiness in big teams, always. You got, but I, you turn that into belief. You're like I'm trying to be a way, find a way where I'm humble on the inside, but confident to an extent on the outside, but not to the point of being, uh, you know, over the top. You know, you got to be humble, but like, you got to have some air of confidence. Can't put yourself down. Can't say, oh, no, you know, I've got a lot to learn. Well, you have. But, like, from a sense of foot badger football, I was putting myself down too much. Then I came back to this team, and I was getting more time on the pitch. We weren't winning as many, the same amount of trophies. We're getting there. We're working towards it. For sure, we still want to win. But I, I by far, have more fun than the team I'm in now. The team that's not winning all the time, necessarily. The challenge I enjoy more. Because in the, being in the top team, you could win a game 5 0, and like, even if I scored, I'd be like, oh well. I didn't have the same joy. And now it's like, if you score a goal, I go mental. My celebrations are insane. Like, Bonucci against England is coming to Rome, you know. Those kind of celebrations. And when I. Scored a goal against Aspire for the team I'm at now, Muscle Warriors. Uh, that was my best celebration ever. And it felt so good it just to prove I'm still good enough. Not necessarily to anyone else, but to myself. And that sounds self-centred, but if you don't believe you're good, how can you actually be good, any good? And I've tried to take away from that... Um, Get rid of that negativity and like, be humble but confident at the same time. And I feel like, I don't know, that's the best way to be. Just don't, you know, yeah, you'll fail, but you'll learn. That failure will teach you and you'll learn from it and you'll get better. You'll be like, I don't want to feel this way again. And you'll fight to not feel that way again. And yeah, we're not immune to negativity and like, emotions because your emotions can make or break you literally in any situation how you choose to respond how you react to the situation that can really change how it ends up because you know I could have thought oh no rubbish let me quit I almost quit the sport because I didn't think I was good enough and it wasn't about trophies or no trophies the trophies, I can throw them in a bin, who cares? And, yeah, people look up to me for those trophies I won in the past. And I get respect. And But may, but regardless of the trophies, not the trophies. It's how, how you are as a person that will get people to like. It doesn't matter about your success. If you're working towards something, you've got something you're doing every day um, to work towards, you know. And even when I had to move teams... 
I thought, okay, that's not the only thing in my life. Football is a big part of my life, but I've got my YouTube career. I've got my videos to make. I can really kick on. And with the YouTube, I did kick on at that point. Because I thought, you know, I'm fed up with this sport for a bit. Let me wait till the new season starts. Get my head together, you know. And one of my close friends in the sport, uh, credit to Ryan, <laughs> he um, convinced me not to move to another club completely, to stay in the sport, to come back and pick up where I left off. And so I did that. And here we are. That was 2017 when I changed team, when I left Aspire and came back to the team where it all started. Obviously, all within the same club, so you get to see the same people week in, week out. Um, it's like family, really. So, four years it's been. Two of those years have been in lockdown, so I've been able to play. But we really kicked on those seasons. And yeah, I had my YouTube career kicked on. And 2017, for as negative as it could have been, was a brilliant year. Like, I'm, I really kicked on in everything. In a way, even in enjoying myself as well, I didn't, like, I thought it like, ruined my whole year. I had probably one of the best summers that year and years to follow as well. Obviously, last year we didn't go anywhere because COVID, but like 2017, that was that make or break year, I guess. Could have broken me, but it really made me. And that is the year I started YouTube, technically. I started it in April. This was by the July. So a lot happened that year. The formative year, let's just say. But I was really toying with the idea of vlogging for like six months before that. Uh, after when I was watching other vlogs. Now I watch a lot of YouTube, yeah. But not other vloggers as such. So I need to get back into that. Some of them have stopped vlogging. Moved on to other things. But yeah. I've got to make it my own. And they say, oh, yeah, you watch someone else's vlog. Are you learning from them? Are you copying them? You know, No, I'm learning from them. I'm not copying. I'm taking what they know and making it my own. Like when someone remakes a song. It can be brilliant in its own way. But you have to make it your own. Put your own twist on it. You know, shape it your way. But take other ideas and use them in a good way. Not in literally like for like kind of way, but see what e each of these people are doing. Try and merge the ideas, I guess. And here we are, so many years later on YouTube still. Um, been difficult in lockdown, don't get me wrong. Probably the most difficult time to be a vlogger. At, well, saying that, it's a ma it was a make or break time as well, because there's a lot to talk about. And yeah, you don't want to mention COVID every week. Um, I probably mentioned it a bit too much. Um, but, you know, things around lockdown gave me different ideas. At times I did lack ideas because I couldn't really go out so much and use my surroundings to help inspire me. You know, lacking a bit of inspiration. But just thinking of the life we can get back to is what kept me through the whole thing, the whole two years. And we're still in the thick of it. But knowing that, it, well, you could get back to normal life or somewhere near it or even get a holiday makes you appreciate the simple things. And me moaning about what team I was in back then in 2017 is not really important at all when, in the hindsight compared to the things going, going on now, the mental health uh, problems the world is having, let alone people I know. Uh, people close to me, which has been difficult, but it te it gives you, it really made me humble. I thought I was humble before, but like, you mix that with the confidence and self belief, you got to. It's like chatting up women, honestly. <laughs> That's a terrible analogy. You know, they, they like a, a confident guy to a certain extent, but it's got to be something good in there. Some a humble side, something, you know. And there's a lot of toxic masculinity. They say, oh, yeah, 
women like a proper masculine geezer, but uh, we we're all, we all got we all got a soft side, I guess. I guess. Um, I don't know. Why am I talking about love life? Um, well, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that because you're just going to rinse me in the comments. Oh, uh, it is what it is, though, isn't it? Um, yeah. Let's just say when it comes to women, I haven't, I haven't got tunnel vision. You know what I mean? I need to be like a racehorse. What? Whoa. Whoa, did I say it? Like, in terms of the racehorse when they wear those covers on their eyes to look forward, or police horses. So they just focus on one thing. I can't do that. I can't do that. In terms of talking to one girl. It doesn't work that way. But you need that confidence, but you've got to be a good person deep down as well. Polite to some extent. But then everyone has different opinions. Then my brother will be like, oh yeah, but um, these younger girls are crazy. I was like, oh. So? Everyone's crazy in their own way. But, but what he means by that is they can't sit still. I don't know if that's true. Um, co completely off subject. Think, what was I even talking about? What am I on about? <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to develop more confidence in everything I do. Like, I said it about the football. And a, I was taking it too seriously. Just enjoy the moments you're in. If you could bottle good moments, wouldn't we all, you know? I've said that before. Like, you can't really bottle the good moments, so... Make the most of them when they're here. Because time passes. We can't control time. But... You can control what you do with your time. And how you treat others is vital to that, you know? And... You know, treat people how you want to be treated. Um, but yeah, it's a long process, and no one's ever perfect till the bitter end. Like nobody's ever perfect, um, and you can't expect to be. And to be perfect would be, I don't know, wouldn't be right. It'd be pointless. What's the struggle? What's life without struggle? Without a challenge? You know, without commitment. And that's the hardest thing. Like, it takes a man, a real man, to commit to something, to be responsible, you know, raise a family, go to work day in, day out, get up early through that pain instead of just staying in bed and doing sod all. Getting up early, the pain of getting up early, you know, going to a job, working maybe two jobs to provide for a family. That takes guts. That takes bravery and people do it for 20 30 years you know and they literally bleed to make money for their family to put food on the table um men or women uh, i've got to be equal here sometimes it's the women providing a lot of, a lot of the times it is with a lot of things you think in the animal kingdom when it comes to lions right the female is the one that goes out hunting most of the time that brings back the food. Um, it's not always the men, but I'm saying a man or woman takes a real man or woman to be in that routine. And it can break some people. And don't judge those people if it does, because it, it doesn't mean you're not the person you thought you would be. It just means you're human. And it does take guts to do that. I mean, you know, getting out of bed takes guts to some extent. Every day in lockdown, regardless, I didn't say, oh, I want a pyjama day, I'm going to stay in bed and mope around. No. Got up, made videos or socialised with friends at least. Went in the garden when the weather was good. Went for a walk or drive when I could. All these things, you know, keep your mind occupied. But then again, why I learned as well in lockdown is that it takes a brave soul to just be with your own thoughts for an hour. Like, no distractions, your own mind. And some people can't do it. They need a distraction. And distractions are good, but you need to 
have a moment to, you know, think things out and actually be with your own thoughts, not on Instagram or TikTok, being influenced by others, making them decide how you act, how you are as a person. You know, just be who you are. Like I said about film reviews, a director, if he reads all these negative, if he, all these positive film reviews, the one negative one will stand out. Um, so, you know, just be who you are. Don't let other people shape who you are. And like I said, I'm a, I'm, I'm a thinker. I think too much sometimes. And then sometimes I don't think at all. When it comes to chatting up women, useless. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you've got to be, I don't know, I don't know what, what I'm even saying anymore. But you've got to have belief in yourself. Or you won't do anything. You think, you think, oh, nah, that might be difficult. Well, screw that, do it. If it's difficult, it should be motivation to do it. Because when you complete that challenge or climb that mountain or whatever it is, that metaphorical mountain, you'll feel a lot better. Like, I can't sit still. I fidget if I can't make a video or if I don't, I feel guilty. Like, the rest of the day, I can't enjoy the day because I haven't worked hard at all that day. And some days I'll be like, yeah, screw it. I'm not doing any work today. Other days I'll be like, I have to. But you shouldn't have to prove to anyone else. Like, stay in your lane, do what you've got to do. You know, um, that tunnel vision, focus. And if you work on that one thing hard enough, you'll get there. And the other thing, you need a plan B. Um, well, you can't always have a plan B. You can. But if you think about that, you'd be like, okay, well, if this don't work, I've got that. You've got to think, like, life or death. Like, if I don't do this... I will, that's it. And then with that mindset, you can do anything. Honestly. When, it, like, there's no other way. Like, you've got to die, to, or you've got to do that, or die, or something, you know. It's, it's life or death, but, like I said, don't take life so seriously. But at the same time, with that one focus, that dream you want to achieve, people are like, oh, why do you work all the time? Because I've got a dream and I want to achieve it. You know, they're thinking of that Lamborghini, that big house. Some people work all their life and don't get that. And they're content. And they're happy. There's two kinds of people, you know. There's wolves. Wolves. There's, wo there's sheep and there's wolves. Are you a sheep or are you a wolf? Are you a sheep that just goes along with everything? Just follows the leader. Or are you a wolf? You know. Just like, I don't need to explain that anymore. You can see the difference. You can tell the difference. And so you realise that you, you're you not going anywhere. Um, it's simple, really. Like, how many times have I felt useless or fed up with being me? But I just carried on. Like, I know so many people in the same boat, they just think, screw it, carry on, or, you know, could just stay in bed all day, think, oh, what's the point, but no, in, lo in lockdown, I got up every day, got dressed, and did something, didn't mope around in bed watching friggin' Netflix, and, uh, yeah, you're never going to be a finished project. Like, there's always more to add. Like that church in Barcelona, where they're always constructing, adding, fixing it, because it's made of, like, clay, I think. It's a weird, weird structure, anyway. Don't know why I'm talking about a church in Spain. But if you've been to Barcelona, you know what church. The Sagrada Familia, whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it's called. What I know is they ruined it because there's a McDonald's opposite from when I went to Barcelona. But yeah, enjoy the moments, enjoy the journey, guys. Like, whenever I've driven with the family to Italy, we've enjoyed the journey on the way there. 
the scenery, the different things you see, the conversations you have as a, as a family in the car, the banter, and the arguments too. It's all part of being a family, part of being human. Uh, you know, part of being Italian, really. Everything we do revolves around food. Every journey we take, every time we're driving to Italy, what, where are we going to stop for lunch? There better be a restaurant on the road somewhere. There better be some good food. We better have a proper breakfast. Do they have a coffee machine? Do they have good coffee? Or do they burn it, like in the Isle of Wight? <laughs> Nothing against the Isle of Wight, but they burnt the bloody coffee. Nothing worse than burnt coffee in the morning. We need our coffee, and we need it good. No half ass capsule coffee. No, like Costa coffee, rubbish coffee. Not worth that money. Starbucks coffee, terrible. If you want, like, espresso, or black coffee that like I have, or espresso. But yeah, something to literally kick you into gear. And yeah. <laughs> If you didn't already, I say it all the time. People wind me up like, oh, we didn't know you were Italian. You couldn't have guessed. And then to piss me off, they'll be like, oh, I thought you were French. If they call me French, that'll piss me off. Or, or they're like, oh, I thought you were Greek. Almost. I mean, we're halfway there. It's, I mean, I'm not from Sicily. If I'm from Sicily, I'm definitely half Greek. <laughs> um, or Syrian. But, uh, I mean... Yeah, because Italy, the Greeks, the Greeks were there in Sicily anyway. A lot of different uh, people from all over the world have taken, have been in Sicily, like at different times in history. That's completely random. But yeah, I am a southern Italian, so I'm probably a descendant of, uh, I don't know, Hannibal. As in the guy from history that literally almost defeated the Romans, or did defeat the Romans in certain battles anyway. Why am I getting into history? No idea. Um, yeah, I'll save that for another video or another upload, or whatever I'm reacting to next. I do want to react to another old vlog that I've done, um, and you'll see that soon. Some other funny videos, I did one that got completely copyright striked that I just binned in the end. I might just upload it to Facebook, just to entertain you guys, whoever's on my Facebook. But I'll probably get banned from there too. But yeah, I'm just excited that I will be able to travel to Italy this summer, be it by car or by plane. I won't tell you when, because then you'll turn up at my house. And the phone is ringing. Yep, so guys, that was my phone. My house phone ringing. Why am I moving? I don't know. I can't sit still. But yeah, so it's been two years since I've been to Italy. Since I've been anywhere. If I'm honest, I haven't been anywhere in that time. Well, anywhere near Italy. And oh, we missed a family. We've all missed the family, like, ridiculously. Yeah, you've got video calls, you've got Skype, you've got Zoom or whatever. Skype? Who even uses Skype these days? It's all about Zoom. So, or, well, WhatsApp video call, in our case. We've got a big family WhatsApp group, which is good to keep in touch, but it's just my aunties sending little wake-up emojis or, like, m good morning whatever, like a little gif that says good morning at seven in the morning from Italy, which is like too early. And I just I don't really go on it. But if you want to talk to the family, they're there on the WhatsApp group with my fa with both sides of the family. Got separate WhatsApp groups. Because like, there's too many of us. Even then, we're not all on these group chats. Because people just get fed up and leave. Because it's just the same old banter every day. Like, who cares? Some of it, but it's great to have. And I'm grateful for all the technology. Social media, all these things. They can be deadly in a time like this. And they really get people down. But who cares? 
50 years later, that comment someone said about your dodgy moustache or your whatever, that spot on your nose. Like, who cares? It's what someone else said. You can't let what someone else thinks of you define who you are or how you want to be perceived. Like, you know, like I said before, just be you. Don't be anyone else. Don't look at anyone else or what they're doing or what are they doing. Oh, they're doing this, but I haven't done this yet. I'm not so successful in this field, but they're doing better in this. They got, oh, they got a BMW. What have I got? I've got a Toyota. Like, Toyota's not bad either. But I'm not having to go to Toyota owners, but like, you know I mean, don't look at what other people got because they're at different stages in their life. The bar's different for different people. Um, maybe you're working towards something and eventually you'll have that same car or a better car. But it shouldn't be about who's got the better car. But that's what I mean. Don't look at what they're doing. Focus on what you're doing. Stay in your lane. You know, not stay in your lane, but like, don't worry about what other people are doing. Obviously, you can do what you want, but like, literally, you got, if you don't believe that you're going to achieve in, in your own, uh, like, life, then you won't. You know, there's these people that say, oh, I'm having a bit of bad luck, been having bad luck, had bad luck all but my life. I don't believe in that. Like, oh, I can't catch a break, whatever they say in the US, that kind of phrase. You know, like, you can't be that guy. Like, stay away from those people because they will bring you down with them. Oh, I'm having a bit of bad luck, bad luck. Not quite going so well. No, you know can't be always bad luck like there's got to be something you're doing wrong to be always in the wrong situation for some people they just are but like yeah I said failure can teach you but like if you're just saying oh I'm ba it's bad luck and you don't have some sort of constructive criticism to give yourself you're never going to learn like I said don't put yourself down but literally if you if it's your like there's something you can change to improve, you know, you've got to do it. You can't just be comfortable where you are, because comfortable never got anyone anywhere. You've got to be, get out of your comfort zone a bit. We all love being comfortable. We've all got devices, uh, you know, be it drinking or whatever else. I'm not going to go into detail about different addictions, but we've all got a vice or something that we do that go, ah. Oh, you know, we're comfortable. This makes me feel good. you got to get out of your comfort zone sometimes. Like, I had a huge fear of public transport, like getting on buses. 2019, I conquered that fear. What, you think, oh, what an idiot. A fear of a bus? What's wrong with you? But, like, fear of the ramp doesn't come out. You know, surrounded by people I don't know. All these anxieties. And now it's doubled because of COVID. Like, sod going on a bus. I'm actually considering it, but sod going on a bus to some extent. But like in 2019, that was the year I started using public transport again after three or four years or more. Um, and I dealt with it and yeah, I got my vlog camera and I'm talking to a, a lens and people around me are staring at me. But whether I have that lens or not, I'm, get, I'm still getting stared at for other reasons, you know, the obvious ones, the elephant in the room. But, like, who cares? And some people look at you with sympathy. But I, I, I like to think that at least one person is looking at me with, like, admiration. Some sort of respect. At least one. Doesn't matter, really. But, um, no. Nah. Maybe it's just because I look so young and innocent. But I'm really not. But, yeah, so conquering that fear going around London with my vlog camera, you know. Obviously now with COVID it's different. But, like, the confidence to do that. Like, I wouldn't have pictured myself doing that maybe five years ago or before. To just be rolling around talking to a camera, not caring what people think. But then one day I realised, like, I spend my life not caring what people think, all those 
that from going down the street, people staring at me. Like, if you if you're disabled and you're surprised by that, well then, what? What do you expect? You know. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Like, don't expect people not to stare at you. Like, um, someone I know, they said they went to, like, Rome or somewhere. And they're like, everyone was staring at me. I was like, well, I get stared at everywhere. Like, what's the difference? Maybe they've never seen a wheelchair before. Or, you know, a disabled person with that level of confidence and self-belief. Like, no offence. Like, people have the wrong opinions. Like, watch Perth at chair football. We're, we're all highly... Uh, Aggressive and confident on that pitch. And we could do anything on that pitch. We could do anything off that pitch. But it's a, a stage to perform. You know? A level to compete. Like any other sport. It's not fun and games. It's not don't feel sorry for us ball. It's, you know, that's the banter we have. What we call it sometimes. Well, maybe only me call it, I call it that. It's just proving that, that you can do what you want if you put your mind to it. Like, and credit to Power Chair Football gives me a lot of confidence in the way I can talk to people and um, what I do as a person and life. And so, yeah, while I've got all these, like, I don't know, like, I never thought I'd be good in front of a camera, but here we are. Um, still doing it. Of course, I could never speak in a room full of like a hundred people. I could never do a wedding speech. Nah, that's why I'm getting married, guys. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I can't do that sort of thing. I don't know. Like, I just can't. It's not for everyone. And I, or I'd get my words mixed up. But you know. Speaking to a camera is different, I guess. There's all things we're good at, but like, it's hard work, guys. If you're not good at something, work hard. Like, I'm sure if I put my mind to it, I could speak in front of a thousand people if I just worked on it and practiced. But each to their own, you know? And I'm going to end it here because, yeah, I have said all I need to say and it's always it's catharsis when I do this is that the word like it's I don't need a psychologist or a shrink or whatever you call them I got you guys and I got these cameras to say everything I need to say and literally feel better after shit me that is a big spider so yeah guys that was a huge spider had to be dealt with didn't kill it, didn't kill it. It's in the garden now. Thank God, because God... I was just talking, I saw it like coming down, down the wall or down from its web or whatever. Like, freaking hell, that was big. Scared of... I, I, see what I mean? I'm scared of spiders, guys. What do you want? Some people, it's snakes. But for me, it's spiders. I'm sorry. I'm sorry... We've all got a phobia of something. But yeah, guys, I was just about to end it. And on that note, we will end it. I want to thank you guys for joining me. If you have made it to the end and listened or fallen asleep or whatever, or got offended by the England stuff, whatever. We're here, guys. We're at the end of a podcast and I haven't made a podcast in ages. So it's good to be back. And I'll probably be ages till the next one. Just give me more to talk about, really. But thank you for joining me. I want to thank you all. How many times have I? Anyway, guys, take it easy, fam. Peace.